I started off this project by getting me two boards. These are called shorts, two by fours. They actually measure two and a half by inch and a half by six foot at Home Depot for dollar twenty-five cents each. The next one is I have. Uh, well, let's see if you can even see it here. A plastic template with the uh, letter size. I don't know if you can even see it, but actually this is just a... Right there it is. Actually what it is is just, it's just plastic standard letters. They're two and a half inches tall. Uh, I got this plastic template from, I don't know, somewhere. But Hobby Lobby has them. But the letters are two and a half inches. And I like them, they're just plain letters. Alright, next thing I did was took the board and I came up with all the names. I wanted to make signs for and then I laid them out. Here's my son's name, David. And what it is is I laid it out and then I put a little line connecting each one half inch thick connecting each letter because when I cut these out I want them to be attached together. Then what I'm going to do is I'll router this out and I'll show you how I router that out. But what it is I'm going to free these all now, cut them into the separate names roughly through here and then I'm going to bandsaw and I'll show you me on the, on the bandsaw and what I do. All right, let me go ahead and start cutting these out. I'm just going to free the separate names up so I can cut them on the bed. cut out. Now all I've got to do is bandsaw this all out now and I'll show you that. The next step is I drill some holes in these and I'll show you why. But what I use is use just two different size fastener bits. Uh, one's a half inch and the other's I think around three eighths or something. And it is and the R's I drill it, bottom of the J's, the B's are, bottom of the U's, C's, S's, the O's, the A's, D's. What it is is, I'm making it a lot easier to cut these out. You know, I come right down through here and I go around and just cut those out. And that'll make it a lot easier to cut out. You'll see when I start cutting them out. All right, the next step is to cut all the letters out. Originally, the first couple of ones on the saw I started cutting out, I had a quarter inch blade, but it was only 0.014 thick. That originally came with the saw. I like the thicker blade because it has a wider, cuts a wider curve, and it stays straighter better. Plus, through the other one, it had like 16 teeth per inch. This saw blade only has six teeth per inch. The cut will be rougher, but it'll be easier to twist to go around the circles because of the wider curve. Plus, two, uh, the stiffer the blade. Easier it is to turn it around the shape. So, all right, cut one point. Let me continue cutting. Here.
as you can see, it really can't cut easily in to get from this way because I'm hitting up against the side. So what it is is, I'm gonna lay these letters out on the other side and I can cut like here. Let me show you. You can see I made the S, hooped up laying it out around the first time. But I got it laid out right now, so I just cut the S out from this. sand what I can on here to round it off a little better on the sander. But basically, I'll leave most of it rough. And then uh, I'll show you how I cut these out with an improvised overhead router that I came up with. Then I'm going to cut out the rest of them. Showing you the cutting out the one that's basically all I'm going to do. And like I say, when you find it too long, Lay it out on the other side, and you cut from the other side. All right, that's about it. Like I say, it really works out a lot better with a six-bladed bandsaw. It's a coarser cut, but that thicker blade gives me a wider curve to be able to turn the blade easier. I'd recommend the, the thicker blade, and, it, and it, the thicker blade holds it straighter. All right, that's it down here. I do a little sanding on. On this sander comes in real handy for the small little stuff. So I'll do as much as I can on here just to round some of it off. say it. If I can get it a little nicer around sanding, hey, makes it a little bit better. I don't bother with a lot of it because, like I say, after I do this and you see what I mean with the overhead router at that, the next step is I burn it and I'll show you how that works. <clears throat> My only comment cutting, you should got to watch out with the bandsaw. 
I don't know if you can see it, the little pieces get down in the throat down in here. Let me catch it. I'm cutting a lot of little slim pieces out. They get jammed down in the throat, and then they jam up against the blade, and then the blade locks up. So every once in a while, if you see the blade slowing down, go in and clean all the little chips out underneath here. All right, the next phase of this is got them all cut out, but like I say, the B's and R's and all the letters that uh, I had to cut out, I glued um, a little bit of piece of wood in there just to hold those two together to strengthen it up a little bit. Now I'm going to trim it off like I did here and then sand what I could of it, just smooth it up a little bit. And uh, I'll show you how I how that works out. <clears throat> I found this I found this little sander really comes in handy on a, a lot of this little stuff we can just get around in there with it. Some of the inside go around them uh, you can dress it up a little bit better. Dress up those, smooth out the letters a little bit better so they're more, a little bit more extinct. <clears throat> All right, the next phase of this will be with an overhead router I'm going to show you how to improvise with. Router and out some of these so all of these letters are more distinct. All right, on the drill press, all I did was I got a masonry drill, actually a half inch drill in here with a quarter inch shank. Wrap some sandpaper around it. And make sure it's going to be spinning in the right direction. So it'll stay wrapped around. Then to clean up some of the O's and the G's, I use the sanding to clean out that a little bit. Let me show you what I did here, or I'm going to do here. This is a little hand router I have. Cheap, you got it for five bucks at a garage sale. Now take it, I took the base off, and I'm going to mount the base on the, the top table on my drill press. As you can see, I had to cut it out a little bit there because so when the nut goes down through that, and I'll show you that in a minute, uh, I can attach it to it. I drill some extra holes here, put some bolts through there to bolt it on, and then I'll show you once it's bolted on. But first I get a bolt, this piece of plastic that I had laying around onto the bottom because I want a big table down here. Let me show you that first. Here's my signs. Got the letters cut out on the bandsaw, but now I got the spacing to hold the letters apart. I want to 
routed that down around a quarter of an inch in between the letters, just so the letters would stick out more. And I'll show you how that looks. So yeah, well, here's the setup that I have on my little drill press. Like I say, I have limited room, so everything I try to combine. Just a little overhead router setup. Now, just like I say, a little $5 router that I got at a garage sale. This is a Harbor Freight one. But uh, I got it bolted down to this top table. And you can see underneath. See underneath, there's the cutter. And I got it down. So I can route it that much off in between the two letters. Now like I say, it's a lot easier to router this space out with this setup as opposed to having a router on top because it's hard to see. This you can really see it good. Alright, let me set, the, set up the router and let me router out a couple of them. Alright, here's the last view of how I got this router set up. That's the table with a bit underneath. I was using a 3 16 single cutter bit, but boy, that to work out too well. So what it is, I got a, a quarter inch two fluted uh, router bit in there, straight bit. Alright, that's, that's it. Here's my signs. Got the letters cut out on the bandsaw, but now I got the spacing to hold the letters apart. I want to router that down around a quarter of an inch in between the letters, just so the letters will stick out more. And I'll show you how that looks. But yeah, well, here's the setup that I have on my little drill press. Like I say, I have limited room, so everything I try to combine. This is a little overhead router setup. Now, just like I say, a little $5 router that I got at a garage sale. This is a Harbor Freight one. But uh, I got it bolted down to this top table. And you can see underneath. See underneath, there's the cutter. And I got it down. So I can router that much off in between the two letters. Now like I say, it's a lot easier to router this space out with this setup as opposed to having a router on top because it's hard to see. This you can really see it good. Alright, let me set, the, set up the router and let me router out a couple of them. You can see how I routed that down. Let's see how this video took us, see if my arms were in the way. Alright, here's the last view 
of how I got this router set up. That's the table with a bit underneath. I was using a 3 16 single cutter bit, but boy, that didn't work out too well. So what it is, I got a, a quarter inch two fluted uh, router bit in there, straight bit. All right, and that's, that's it. <clears throat> this is the table, and I see I had to cut that notch in there so the, the nut on the router would fit down onto it. And a couple of holes I drilled to bolt it on. And that, that's what I had to do to attach it to this table. I got all of my names cut out. This was my nickname. Now, I cut them out of 2x4s, especially because of the way I'm going to finish them. Now, this is the last thing I do after I cut them out. I take it and I burn them. sign all burnt. Next thing I take a wire brush. There it is. Now what it does to wire brush, the more you burn it, the deeper the indentation, but it gives it that weathered look. You're burning out and you're brushing out the soft and leaving the hard part of, uh, of the grain there. Then the next thing, I zap it with some high gloss paint and it really makes it stand out. And that's how I do the name plates. Alright, here's the finished names with the gloss painted on them. And I couldn't tell you how long it took me to make them, but like I say, it was just a nice, easy project, and I like the burning technique. All right, I hope uh, nobody out there you catch the that new floop thing we got going around. I'm staying in the house. All right, you take care. Wish you luck. Have fun.